if you're wondering what if you're wondering for ugh, if you're looking for a place to start with a if you're looking for a place to start with Hey everyone, in today's video, we are talking all about structured literacy, and more specifically, I am sharing five steps to take to get started with structured literacy in your K through two classroom. Now, structured literacy is usually compared against balanced literacy, which many of us used to teach in our classrooms, and balanced literacy is essentially a meaning-based type of structure to teaching literacy. So in balanced literacy, meaning was the main focus, and we would, you know, teach our literacy lessons through shared read-alouds, through guided reading, through lots of independent reading oftentimes, and when we talk about structured literacy, it's going to be more code-based. So we're really diving into phonics, phonemic awareness, figuring out the language of English to decode in our stories. It should be noted that both structured literacy and balanced literacy have most of the same elements, but again, balanced literacy is generally more focused on meaning-based instruction, while structured literacy is based on the science of reading, and it's based on code-based types of instruction. So we're gonna talk a lot more about phonics, a lot more about phonemic awareness, and then using those to create meaning. So I do have five easy steps for you to follow to get started with structured literacy. If you're ready to hear them, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive in. All right, step number one for getting started with structured literacy is to make sure you're spending time every single day practicing phonological awareness activities. Students need to practice phonological awareness and phonemic awareness skills every day in the classroom, and it doesn't need to take a long time. It can take about five to 10 minutes, but it's something that should be practiced every day. Now, if you're wondering what types of activities you can do, I actually just made a video, looks like this right here, where I walk through the entire scope and sequence of teaching phonological awareness activities to children that are ages four all the way to nine. So you can go watch that video. I share exactly what activities students should be doing at each age, as well as some examples of what that activity looks like and sounds like in your classroom. So step one is make sure you're doing those phonological awareness activities. All right, tip number two is to make sure you're following a systematic scope and sequence for teaching your phonics skills. Now I just shared with you an entire scope and sequence for phonological awareness activities. Remember this video right here, just shared it. But in terms of phonics, you want to make sure that you're teaching students these skills in a sequential systematic way. Now research right now says that there's not a specific scope and sequence that is better than another one. For instance, so many scopes and sequences interchange when we teach consonant blends and when we teach digraphs. And some programs don't even teach consonant blends explicitly. I personally like to. I always like to have students practice that. Story for another day. But research has shown that it doesn't really matter what order you teach those in as long as you follow a few main rules. First, you want to make sure your scope and sequence naturally progresses from easier skills to more difficult ones. And secondly, you want to make sure that the phrases and text that you're having your students practice these words, that they remain 80% decodable, meaning that the words you're using in your text to practice the sounds you're teaching don't include things you haven't taught yet, or at least only include about 20% of things you haven't taught. Most of the words should be decodable, meaning they've learned how to decode that phonics pattern already. And then as students students learn more patterns, you can throw in those words to the new decodables for the new skills you're learning. If you're looking for a place to start with the scope and sequence, there are two that I really enjoy. The first I enjoy most and is the letters scope and sequence. Um, if you just do a quick Google search and type in letters, phonics, scope and sequence, you'll find quite a few of them that you can actually just print out. I like this scope and sequence because it explicitly lays out where students should be able to decode each of these phonics patterns and what grade level they should be able to do that. And also when they should be able to master encoding or writing these phonics patterns. I like being able to see both next to one another so I can reference that. Another scope and sequence that I like that I think is really user friendly is this one right here from UFLI, the University of Florida Literacy Institute. And I like here that this one shows the grapheme and phoneme correspondences and what order they would teach them in. So if you're looking for places to get started, both of those are great ones to begin with. I'll actually go ahead and link both of those down in the description. You can take a close look and try to align what materials you have to go along in that order. Step three for getting started with structured literacy 
literacy is to make sure you spend time teaching phonics every day. Now that you have your scope and sequence and you know that you need to include some phonemic awareness activities, you have to teach phonics. And if you're coming from a balanced literacy world, you might be spending more time teaching phonics than you used to in the past. Now a solid phonics lesson should last about 20 to 30 minutes and it should include the following parts. You'll want to start by stating the goal and purpose, then you will practice your phonological awareness. You want to review previous lessons, introduce a new concept, provide guided practice, provide extended practice, have students practice dictation, you want to connect the word to meaning, and then you'll want students to read decodable texts. Now naturally that's a lot to do in a phonics lesson, so it's likely that you'll split that kind of down the middle and practice it and spread it out over two days. But either way, you'll want to be following those steps and teaching explicit phonics in your classroom for 20 to 30 minutes each and every day. All right, step four to implementing structured literacy is to be sure to include multi-sensory activities. Now, I actually just wrote a few research papers for one of my grad classes all about dyslexia. And when I was doing the research, I got to read a bunch of studies that talked about the importance of multi-sensory learning with students with dyslexia. But what was interesting is it wasn't just the students with dyslexia that actually had better gains in phonics and decoding and literacy, but all students that were introduced to multi-sensory learning had better gains. The hypothesis behind a lot of the research has to do with something called dual coding theory, where essentially we are giving our students um, different pathways to the brain to remember to recall information. And students with dyslexia specifically often have trouble recalling uh, like letter names for the sounds that they hear, right? So they're having trouble recalling that. So by giving them multi-sensory opportunities to practice these letters, these sounds, these phonics activities, they actually have two different pathways in the brain that they can retrieve information from. It's very interesting, very cool. But also again, even more importantly, it actually helps all students learn, not just the those with dyslexia. Some simple ways to incorporate multi-sensory learning are by using little chips, little cubes to have students segment words. So you might say the word pig and have students move a chip or move a cube for each sound they hear in the word pig. P -I -G. They'd move three. You can have them even take it a step further, have them use some sound boxes, and then this way they can do some phoneme and grapheme mapping, where not only are they putting a chip or a cube or squishing Play-Doh, whatever they're doing, but something multi-sensory for each sound they hear, then they'll go ahead and move each chip and write down the letters, the graphemes that match each sound. There are plenty of ways to make your learning multi-sensory, but that is step number four. And step number five for getting started with structured literacy is to ditch those leveled readers and bring in decodable readers. Now, I'm not one of those teachers that thinks all leveled readers need to be completely thrown away or burned, never to be seen again. I do think they have their place in many different scenarios, which I'll talk about in a second. But during that small group time that you're with your students, if you are focusing on a code-based instruction, like structured literacy, you wanna make sure that the text you're giving your students to read match with what you're teaching them. Which is why step two is so important to make sure that you have a solid scope and sequence so you can choose different texts, different passages that align with exactly the skills you're teaching. And that way you're not giving them different texts and skills with things that they've just never seen before. So if you are getting started with structured literacy, these are the five steps I think you should take just to run through them again. Number one is make sure you're spending time on phonemic awareness activities. Number two is follow a systematic scope and sequence for phonics. Number three, spend time teaching phonics every day. Number four, include multi-sensory instruction. And number five, use decodable readers. Now, before I end this video, I wanna share one last kind of caution. Um, sometimes when teachers are learning about the science of reading, it is very exciting, it can be a little overwhelming, and they often wanna jump so quickly to structured literacy that they kind of just toss everything else out and they only focus on phonics. And while focusing on phonics is the best place to start, you don't want to completely get rid of authentic reading. Your students still need to practice oral listening and oral comprehension skills. They need authentic vocabulary to learn. So please do not skip out on your authentic read-alouds, your purposeful read-alouds that you'll want to read with the class so they can see you reading, they can hear your expression, they can practice retelling, they can practice all these wonderful things, all these skills that you used to teach in balanced literacy. Well, 
most of the skills, not all of them are gonna carry over, but you'll still wanna practice those during a whole group read aloud of some kind. So do all those five steps, but make sure you're also incorporating some real authentic reading. I hope this video was helpful to you. I do get a lot of emails from teachers asking how they get started with structured reading. You know, maybe they're brand new to the science of reading or it's just so overwhelming because there's so much research to dive into, which is all true. Um, so I hope this video helped give you five easy steps that you can take if you're just getting started in structured literacy. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.